I was lucky enough to be able to get into the the old school uh, because I was working for the college which owned it at the time. Later the college sold it off, took the money up to Elgin and never saw it again. This was the Gettles door. Uh, it was the first time I'd ever gone through the Gettles door in my life. Uh, in to the main corridor and across to the first room that's available, that was Bobby Tullock's room. Bobby Tullock was the maths teacher and he was a pure sadist. What bit don't you understand, boy? Hold out your hand, boy. You got six of the belt. You never did sixes as far as I can remember. His son uh, Roy Tullock later taught me in, uh, in the academy at Elgin. Uh, so I was able to, to uh, have both of them. Uh, Bobby Tullock uh, fell in the harbour and drowned at New Year, uh, the year that I was having it. And every child beamed with happiness. Okay, that's the corridor along up the stairs. Uh, very um, well constructed stairs, well constructed uh, uh, banister. Uh, fine big windy to give plenty of light. They were strong on light at, at that time. And then when we went upstairs we went along to the right to go into uh, Miss Mars room, Poodle. Uh, she taught French and she was a lovely lady and been, she tried her hardest to be nice to us if, if we would only let her. A uh, very enthusiastic uh, French uh, lover. Uh, every child uh, who went through our class learned to sing La Marseillaise and I'm still word perfect. Allons enfants de la patrie. There's the table. That was her table and she stood on that table to conduct us singing La Marseillaise. Uh, when Paris was liberated. So every class that came in sang with great gusto. OK, along the corridor, past the top of the stairs, and these were the storage areas that the teachers had. You know, they had next to no material, uh, so storage wasn't really that much of a problem. And into Miss Grant's room. Miss Grant had the misfortune to have a uh, facial disfiguration, and she was known throughout her teaching time in Los as Pluck. Again, she was a really nice lady who would have uh, really been um, willing to be nice to us if, if we had let her. Uh, but I think we're quite resistant to, to people being nice to us, particularly people in authority. Uh, I think regarded uh, authority with suspicion. There's her storage cupboards there, uh, and she had maps, uh, roll-up maps, which uh, were on the, the side there. I can remember when those were installed, the, the rolling um, uh, blackboards. Accommodation. Uh, every Friday afternoon we had spelling and accommodation was one of the words we always got, with privilege as well. Uh, next door, Miss um, Grant was allowed to turn into a library and she was absolutely delighted with her library. Uh, she taught history as well, history and geography and English. It's only in later life that I've come to recognise the quality of some of the installations there. The doors were good, the handles were good. Uh, recently they, they built uh, that excrescence in the um, girls' playground there. Uh, it was just uh, empty when we were there. And uh, that's Miss Peterkins in the far distance. She took the quality class. Uh, the window, uh, they had beautiful um, arrangements, uh, a screw uh, arrangement with cords and you were allowed to uh, open the window. Again, they were they were hot on fresh air. Fresh air was going to be really good for you. Uh, now I've gone down to the primary school uh, and this is the primary hall where I got my first helping of physical education. Uh, no, it was physical training then. Uh, <laughs> I later married a physical education teacher. Uh, our physical training then consisted of going round and round and round and round and round in a clockwise direction, and always clockwise. Uh, which was okay, I mean, if we were going to run in the Olympics, it would be, oh, but you know, yes, yes, clockwise. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't think we had many Olympic runners. The, um, 
the school had been used by the college for various miscellaneous purposes because they were short of room up in Elgin uh, and this was used for pre-nursing training uh, so later on you'll see beds and things so I think this was actually um, Miss Forsyth's room where, where I was uh, started in education uh, again ventilation we, we had uh, ventilation everywhere there's a the, uh, fireplace so that if it got really cold you could have a fire Looking up into the Ginnell's playground and over towards the bell, uh, which was only ever rung by the janitor, Mr. William MacLeod, Willie Hogg. And again, uh, these are all leftovers from the, the college time. Oh, and a sink. Uh, every room had a, a sink at that time. Uh, we're strong in cleanliness as well. So there's the uh, pre-nursing stuff for the, uh, the girls to uh, practice nursing. There's only ever girls at that time. The idea of a male nurse was <laughs> for them. <laughs> Out in the hall again, just looking round at the other end. Uh, the other teacher who was down there was Miss McLeod, uh, the walking lighthouse. Uh, she married Mr. Brown, the science teacher, and it served both of them right. Back up to the main uh, block, uh, Dr. Jessop stood at this exact point uh, every uh, time that children were coming in or going out, and he glared at everybody as they went past. I never can picture him with, without a glare on his face. That was a girl's uh, uh, cloakroom in there, been covered over, I think. Uh, the hall in the main school. Uh, I was amazed to discover that the hall was actually not a hall at all. It was a space between two buildings that had, had a roof shoved over the top. That's why they needed <laughs> the, the uh, cast iron pillars there, which were uh, a bit of a nuisance when you were playing badminton. And one or two rackets wrapped around them. Over in the corner we had a storeroom. Uh, that was Miss Crabe's room there, I think. And uh, Dr. Jessop's room. And I couldn't help but smile when it came to Dr. Jessop's room to discover it's now the toilet. Uh, that was a bit in the, uh, in the art room. It just shows how inspired we were by our surroundings. In the storeroom we used to be issued with uh, sand shoes. Uh, and that was a size 8 there. I was a size 8. Down at the uh, end, the boys' end, uh, that was the um, total provision for boys to wash themselves for. Uh, the boys weren't given to washing anyway. Uh, just in there was the uh, the boys' cloakroom, and hardly anybody ever left anything because it was quite likely to be vandalised. Outside, this was the boys' door. And you can see that the college was not keen on maintaining this building. In fact, they, they really wanted rid of it. Um, the college was owned by the county um, initially. That was a science room there. That's the roof of the, um, of the hall, uh, stuck between that building and the, the next one. Uh, out here, this, w <laughs> this was the heating system. Uh, burning coke and uh, Willie Hogg used to have a supply of boys who'd smoked uh, who would go down there and help him. 